In the spirit of friends helping friends, I'm George Markovich, and I had another talk to give, and Andy asked me to present uh, his paper because he, he couldn't be here. He had an emergency, and we're going to shift gears. Uh, I'm from Fort Myers, and I, I've known Andy for 20 years. I actually trained with him both in Boston and in Palm Beach, so I think I'm uh, qualified to give his paper. And it's similar to the techniques that I used to do his dad's total knee replacement. So, uh, <clears throat> I think it works, um, but we're going to talk about a, a technique uh, that Andy's uh, kind of uh, promulgated. Um, th the whole discussion up to now reminds me of something somebody told me a long time ago that uh, if you don't think it's about the money, it's the money. So uh, this is about uh, some techniques in knee replacement. And uh, it's published in the JBJS. It was one of the scientific exhibits at uh, San Diego, and I think it's it's a pretty good uh, way to uh, guide you in uh, total knee surgery. Uh, we all know the external jigs uh, can cause some alignment errors, both in uh, the component and, and uh, the limb alignment. And this is kind of uh, Andy's uh, attempt at, uh, or our attempt actually as surgeons, to, to get uh, navigation. How do we navigate ourselves in surgery, whether it's high tech or low tech? And uh, the high-tech, of course, as uh, we saw a demonstration yesterday uh, with Dr. Jaffe uh, with navigation, and, and that was part of this paper, as well as just using calipers and using a measured resection technique. So I'm kind of going to quickly go over this, and then I'm going to give a, another talk, which is my talk, about uh, some uh, implant design things. So it's a, uh, <clears throat> it's a technique that uh, basically uh, is guided with templating, uses measured bone resection, and you can, again, use it with either calipers or with uh, a computer. Um, <clears throat> one of the things uh, that's helpful is, is categorizing uh, knee deformity. And um, in looking at a lot of knees, um, when the tibia is uh, sloped in a little bit of varus, uh, term type 1, um, the rotational uh, orientation is a little bit different than if it's a neutral <clears throat> or uh, a valgus orientation. So this is useful in assessing uh, your, your bone resections and seeing what you need. Uh, type 1 tibias typically require some external rotation as we're all been, all been taught to do. But type 2, where you're in neutral or in a little bit of valgus, or even some knees that are in varus, um, you need to be careful about that. And actually, the measured resections um, on the posterior femur is about equal. It's about equal, 8 millimeters or so. So um, the most common is the type 1, 70 to 80 percent. So I'm just going to go through uh, the step sequence. Um, the first thing you do is, is determine what type of tibia you're dealing with um, and get an idea of what your measured resection is going to be. And then um, you uh, go ahead and uh, put uh, your uh, guide on uh, the distal femur. And um, it's generally about 9 to 11 millimeters off the less involved side. Um, but this is where you kind of get uh, a sense of where your mechanical axis um, is going to be uh, and uh, what kind of resection level you're looking at. And then you put the uh, tibial jig uh, on. And um, again, it's, it's uh, referenced in inflection. This is uh, where he's using navigation, but again, you can kind of eyeball it and, and use your rulers and calipers. And um, then you put the knee in extension. You uh, kind of get where your slope is. You don't cut the tibia, though. All you're doing is referencing the tibia. <clears throat> then uh, what you do is, is put the knee in flexion. Uh, you uh, draw out your uh, transepicondylar line and your uh, AP or white sides line for reference. And then you get the parallel, parallel orientation with respect to your proximal tibia so that you have that um, rectangular gap that, uh, that we've known uh, from the insole days uh, so that your flexion gap's uniform. And again, um, you have that guide from uh, what type of tibia you're dealing with. And you make your cuts. Uh, you, uh, you use your four-in-one guide. You uh, prepare the troke. Uh, which uh, this is in uh, particular to this design, which is a uh, uh, 3D knee uh, made by Encore. And then uh, you trial your femur, um, and you trial it on the uncut tibia, because you're going to be reestablishing that neutral axis, um, and uh, you are really just made the femoral preparation thus far, and then you're going to check your alignment. 
you're going to check your stability and then you're going to uh, go ahead and, and cut the tibia uh, and you're going to resect it uh, again uh, knowing basically the same amount that you're taking off the less involved side is going to replicate what the thickness of uh, the implant is going to be. And then you go ahead and uh, cut the patella. So again, the typical, re typical resections for uh, your type 1 or your uh, <coughs> more varus uh, shaped tibia, you have a thicker uh, uh, medial uh, femoral resection and um, the uh, thicker lateral tibial resection. So this is kind of what your uh, cut's uh, uh, going to uh, be planned. And you just, uh, again, try to establish that uh, parallel gap and extension and match it up in flexion. And type 2 or neutral tibias, it's more uniform. You're cutting about the same amount of posterior femur uh, from medial and lateral and the same amount in, uh, on the tibia, uh, about uh, 8 to 9 millimeters. And um, in, in Andy series, it, it worked quite well. Um, he averaged about 120 degrees of motion and he had real good stability. And when he measured uh, doing it with the calipers versus the, the orthosoft device, there really wasn't any uh, differences in, in, uh, in the results. So um, this measured resection technique um, can provide a, a, a good pathway. Um, you can kind of assess uh, your way along each step and if something doesn't make sense, you can correct it. Um, and it can allow for uh, optimization of ligament balancing and, and alignment. And you can do it with a low-tech computer. And really, the most important computer is probably the five inches between your ears. Um, so um, you can use it with MIS or conventional. In his uh, series, uh, he had excellent results. And again, about 70% of patients had over 120 degrees uh, with, his, uh, with his technique.